I just want to know how Reggie know who was there and who was the shooter. And why are y'all letting Reggie word supersede Shug word when he saw who shot him? Let's get to this uh, paperwork. You know what? Let me see. So. This is for those who want to steal. <laughs> Taking that Las Vegas, Nevada, Thursday, July 27th, 2023 at 1.10 p.m. Reporter's transcript of proceedings, volume one. Grand jurors present on July 27th. I'm just going to get to the meat and potatoes. The grand jury exhibits the proposed indictment, page five, exhibits photographs. But they got one, two, three, four, five, six pictures and a CD. Uh, Mr. D. G. Como. D. G. Como. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark D. G. Como. D. G. Como. I am here with Benu Palau. We're here to begin presenting a matter which has been stylized and grand jury exhibit number one as the state of Nevada versus Dwayne Keith Davis, AKA Keefe D and grand jury case 22 CGJ 1176, I mean X. All of the elements of the offense, I know that you guys have a lot of murders but all of the elements of the offense are listed within the proposed, or sorry, grand jury exhibit number one. Is there anybody who needs an additional instruction on the law? Seeing none. There's two additional instructions. One as it relates, as you can see, the proposed indictment suggests a gang enhancement. Gang activity can suggest in any way that a person is of bad character or has a tendency to commit crimes or pro propensity for violence. You may not consider any evidence you hear about gang testimony or any other uncharged criminal conduct that you may hear during the course of these proceedings to think that Mr. Davis has some sort of bad character. Let me make sure I'm pro vicinity proper sanity. I need to make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Propensity. An inclination or natural tendency to behave in a particular way. Propensity. Propensity. Thank you, teacher. 
propensity for violence or propensity for crime. It is it is being only offered for the limited purpose of both motives, as well as to establish the elements um, that are part of the gang enhancement before you. The last instruction, and I don't know if this instruction has been given to this grand jury before, is this is a case that as many of you well know, has had a lot of media attention over the last 27 years. You are instructed that you are not to consider anything in determining probable cause that has not been presented in this courtroom. Can everybody agree that only the evidence that is presented before you in this courtroom will be the evidence that you consider as to whether or not is or is whether or not there is or not probable cause to change Mr. to charge Mr. Davis with the crime. Okay, seeing an agreement from everybody. In addition to that, you know, over the course of high profile cases, there is oftentimes people make efforts to learn what happens in this room. I am just going to remind you that this is a secret proceeding, that nobody should be talking to you period anyways if they even know who you are but if for example a reporter approaches you it's either no comment or just keep walking by and do not talk to them whatsoever and maintain the secrecy of this particular proceeding if there are no questions i'll call my first witness the four person mark a reporter is not going to come to us because they don't know we're on the grand jury anyways. Well, some of you wear badges that say grand jury. Certainly there can be times, I didn't see any today. There's a reason that that door now exists there with the lock on it so that witnesses couldn't sit didn't have to sit in the in a public area before i mean because we had a reporter one time camp out and just identify witnesses it would be pretty easy to identify jurors as well if you were a reporter so that's why i say i hope no reporter would be dumb enough to approach a juror and try to ask a question but considering the nature of what people describe themselves as reporters reporters these days are not always the same ethical people that, you know, the average everyday reporter, a juror. If I'm not mistaken, once an indictment is made, at least the four person's name is made available, isn't it, in that indictment? Well, once it's returned that, that's, well, once it's returned, that's on there and on the transcript, the jurors, if there is an indictment return, the jurors' names are not listed. The, the jurors' names are listed on the transcript as who's present and who's not present. That information as to who's on the grand jury is already out there. Nobody knows where at the, the Thursday grand jury, but yes. So the names of public knowledge, the name of the grand jurors are public knowledge. Yes, because in the newspaper, it will say the last, and I don't know, it was a case, you know, that was just a couple of weeks ago. And it said, yeah, so like, it came back in a minute. We came back with the true bill in a minute. Right. So wait, wait, guys, guys, we're creating a record here. So this cross talk is probably so suboptimal so we're going to call our first witness mr rios so there's a chair there and a microphone just walk up to the chair and remain standing okay please raise your right hand do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you're about to give upon the investigation now pending this grand jury jury shall be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth 
So help you God. Yes, I do. Please be seated. You're advised that you're here today to give testimony and investigation pertaining the offense murder with use of a deadly weapon with the intent to promote further or assist a criminal gang involving Dwayne Davis. Do you understand this advisement? Yes, I do. Please state your first and last name and spell them both for the record. Kenneth Rios. Kenneth Rios, I have been, haven't been first sworn, haven't been first duly sworn by the four person of the grand jury to testify to the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth testifies as follows. Good afternoon, sir. Are you currently employed? No. Okay. What did you retire from? Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department as a police sergeant. How long were you with Metro? 28 years. And when did you start? April 17th, 1990. I'm going to direct your attention to September 7th of 1996. Were you on duty that evening? Yes, I was. And where were you assigned? I was assigned at the MGM Hotel. And what was, and was there a particular event going on at the MGM Hotel that night? Yes, there was. It was a boxing match, and I was assigned with security. Were there other uniform? Well, let me ask you this first of all. Were you in a uniform? Yes, I was in a uniform. Hold on, y'all need to get something to drink. Yes, I was in uniform. And were there other uniform people working with you during this time period? 
Yes, they were. Did there come a point in that, and did there come a point in time that evening where you learned of a disturbance in one of the elevator bays at the MGM? Yes. And did you respond to that location? Yes, I did. And when you got there, did you have contact with anybody who had been involved in a particular incident? Yes, I did. And who was that that you had a contact with? Well, let me ask you this. At the time you had contact with him, did you believe him to be a suspect or a victim? I couldn't tell at the time, but we suspected that he may have been a victim. Did you do anything in the effort to identify him? Yes. I asked for his driver's license, which hotel security already had in their possession. And eventually, did you draft a report from this event? Yes, I did. And did you learn what his name was? Yes, I did. And what was that? Orlando. At some point in time, do you make any or did you ask him whether or not he wants to report an incident, any incident to you or be a victim of a crime? Yes, I did. And what was his response? That he did not. He was just very uncooperative. Okay. Eventually, does he leave your presence? Yes, he does. And over the years, have you learned that much of this interaction, both the fight as well as your interaction with Orlando, was captured by surveillance cameras at the MGM? Yes, we did. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play for you the grand jury exhibit number eight. The day and time of this is 9-7-96, and I started it at 20, 49, and 30 seconds or so. Now, the individuals in a uniform with the short sleeve shirt, short sleeve white shirts, those are security, correct? Yes, that's hotel security. If you could, at some point, obviously... If you could at some point, obviously that's an officer, but at some point, if you recognize yourself from 27 years ago, would you let me know? Okay. And I believe that's me. I believe that's my back towards the camera, which is yes, yes. And the person, Orlando, what is he wearing? He's wearing a white jersey with the 13 on it. With 13 on it? With the with 13 on it. That says Marino. Yes. He walks off at 205550 or on camera. Is that about accurate? Yes, it is. At the time you were were talking to him, do you have any reason to detain him? No. And thus he was free to leave. Yes, he was. And then he did not want to report any crime. Nothing, no crime. I asked him if he needed medical assistance. I remember that, and he refused also. Thank you very much. That completes my questions for the witness if the grand jury has any questions. The four person. By law, these proceedings are secret and you are forbidden from disclosing anyone, anything that transpired before us, including evidence presented to the grand jury. Any event occurring or a statement made in the presence of the grand jury, information obtained by the grand jury. Failure to comply with this nomination is a, a gross misdemeanor punishable up to 364 days in the Clark County Detention Center and a $2,000 fine. In addition, you may be held in contempt of court and punishable by an additional $500 fine, 25 days in the court. Do you understand this admonition? Yes, I do. Thank you. You are excused. Uh, witness, thank you. Thank you. Thank 